So I miscounted two Moskvas and a probable Mimitar. Four Henri's. Count them. One, two, three, four. Against three Russian supercruisers, a Des Moines and a Salem, a Burgoyne and a Yamato. Somebody look out the window and see if they can see a unicorn because two Summers and a Burgoyne? That is a fairly rare set of ships to have. Yeah. Then again, it's Omni. They have got more steel individually than most because they have always been about the competitive play. Exploding Hashtate. Yep, right on schedule. Let's go see how they play this. They know, of course, that they have a colossal stealth advantage, but that doesn't mean they can afford to get careless because they can certainly say there are two radar sets out there, and they're pretty sure at this point, I would say, that there is a third ninja radar set in the shape of X Solitude. So this will be fun, and strangers throwing a good luck have fun in the chat there. Yay for sportsmanship. All right, what are we seeing? Looks like one summer's pushing off to the southeast. Strangers looking to get some action in the BC gap. He may not go for the capture immediately, of course, at least until they've worked out where the radar ships have got to. Conean also pushing up into the BC gap. Of course, the problem they've got is that they'll be able to find the Moskvas easily enough. But remember, if that is a radar Minotaur, they will basically find it by running into it. And at that point, they will be about 1,500 meters inside the Minotaur's radar range. Now, the AP of the Minotaur does have a weakness. If they can get their sterns round, Cornean and Strangers can maybe deflect the worst of it, but it's fast fuse AP. The fuse is only about 15 milliseconds as opposed to the usual 32 or 33 on regular AP shells. So if it doesn't bounce, it's still going to get a full detonation inside them. It's very unlikely to overpen even the relatively thin hulls of a destroyer. But in there, dumping off some long-running torpedoes, just as suppression fire. Doesn't really expect them to hit anything. That's more of a, please don't sail into the approaches to sea. Guys, thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. And he sent one down the right-hand channel, two down the left, and in the process is looking for sea. Strangers has done his initial scouting, plus he's found one of the Moskvas. Nobody seems to have found the Minotaur yet, and the Burgoyne of Bazinga Flux is the one making the mad charge into B. Now, conventional logic at this point says that's actually a, well, it should be a destroyer in B, shouldn't it? Yeah, well, this is Omni. They don't necessarily do conventional, but the deception has not held. We have shells coming in from Graf's Sea uh, and others, and Bazinga takes a very unlucky fire to start with, and I don't think because of the sheer size of that boat, he's going to be able to get defilated in behind the caldera. We have more high explosives coming down. Okay, he's defilated against Sugami. I don't know, however, that he's going to be able to hold that position against anyone else. But they still don't know where the military is. Not that it matters. Bazinga does manage to capture point B. Conean quickly behind, taking at point C. And Strangers is about halfway done with his capture of point A. So Omni being uncharacteristically aggressive here. Normally this team is careful in the first half of the match and just turns it into a death roll later on. But rare to see them making the early grab here. They may have said, you know what? No destroyers. We can get a little bit aggressive. So they found the Republic. See what, ironically enough, see what you've done are playing a more traditional Omni-style strat. Hold back, whittle down the enemy a bit, then put in a single high-strength shove that breaks the opposition completely and lets you grab the caps and make back any immediate deficit. Taxi driver there locking point A and starting a cap. Moskva on Moskva, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look, it's its Omni is in the other cap side. However, we have our first couple of French... In fact, make that three of the French cruisers turning up. The fourth is up by point C. Has anybody seen the Minotaur yet, though? That's the question, and the answer is no. Matsu there turning port slightly to angle away. 
The See What You've Blown cruisers have an interesting issue here. They are right up against the map border, and that is going to curtail their maneuverability. In fact, Avengers Squirrel is now running straight into said map border. Donk, so he's going to have some trouble pulling off there. Luckily, they have managed to turn the flank, and Omni is now in a slightly perilous position. He's got three of the most notorious fire starters in the game focused on him. And yeah, sure, he can angle, but that doesn't really help against that much high explosive. In fact, it's going to boil down to Daka 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 Daka. And there they have found the Minotaur. So, in fact, X Solitude poked in, got spotted, and immediately demonstrated why radar Minotaurs are not common at all in random battles. However, X had had a little trouble finding a fire solution, and ooh, Bazinga Flux did not. Youch! 16 kilometers and straight into the Citadel to judge from the sheer amount of health that just disappeared. So they found the Minotaur, they killed the Minotaur, and now the destroyers have a lot more freedom of action. They don't have to worry about running into a stealth radar system. Omni gets burned down by the three Henri's. Not really surprised. That will allow the Kremlin of Graf Zerse and also the Moscow of Sugumi to secure point A. And at this point, it's going to be on strangers and Usera in particular to fight what amounts to a delaying action at this point. Of course, the slight issue they've got is that those are Henri's. They have engine boost. And an Henri with Sierra Mike and engine boost going at max chat in a straight line. Yeah, that delaying action may not delay for very long. Strangers is going to be lobbing torpedoes as best he can. Remember, he has three quad launchers, so he does reload fairly quickly, but it's not so much about the damage, it's about trying to force the remaining honorees to turn and slow their advance through A. That is going to buy time for Bazinga and the Omni forces at point C to finish up, deal with the remaining, see what you've done forces here, and then basically swing south to turn B into the epic showdown of Ultimate Destiny. Or possibly just an all-out brawl in the centre of the cap, take your pick. Okay, XCHD there, being a little bit coquettish. Um, neither of them, again, really wants to come around the corner, especially X XCHD doesn't, because one of the Honorary's party pieces, although what it doesn't use very often, is that it does have a single torpedo launcher on each side, and you can see it just angling away there. A little bit of a boot knife in Desert Fox's arsenal there. If the Salem comes barreling around the corner incautiously, then he is going to get blacked. And in fact, in that position, Fox is not in a position to do any immediate damage, but he is basically stalling two of Omni's heavy cruisers. What he's not doing, however, is stalling Teacup Yuri and Cornean, who can begin the shove out of sea and start putting the pressure on. Bazinga's Burgoyne is moving up on the Republic of Mosquito. However, Bazinga has traded quite a lot of health for that early cap and kills. The problem with being in point B, of course, is that you do get a lot of attention, and in order to get full guns on, he's got to kick out and bring that stern turret to bear. Doing what he can, but Sugumi has in fact come repositioned as well, and we now have fire come down. Bazinga is now in serious trouble. He's got multiple rounds coming in. He has got at least two fires burning, possibly three. I don't think he's going to be able to disengage from this mess. And, oh dear, this could be Omni's first serious loss. There we go. Bazinga gets burned down. Suddenly, B is open for grabs. Meanwhile, in point A, Strangers and the others still fighting that delaying action, but they have been seriously run off the map. And in fact, we are now getting to the point where Graf could maybe swing to starboard, break away from that pursuit, and grab point B on the quiet. They need to do that fairly rapidly, because at some point, they have to take point B, and it's a race now. Can the Omni forces in C dispose of Desert Fox, which they've just managed to do going around that corner? Although, as noted, they did trade a significant mod of health for it, Although, interestingly, oh, never mind, sudden torpedoes coming out. 
Can THD get his stern out the way? Just inches it. There we go. But he might go broadside to Sugami's Moskva in the process. Torpedoes are coming in at Sugami. The Summers is kicking in. He is going to eat one, maybe two. Nope, just the one from the Summers there. But that is going to force him to accelerate forwards. It will break his line of fire to XCHD. However, it also means that he goes Baron to Woot. And now it's a question, can Woot and XCHD push round the Moskva, or are they going to find themselves forced to go through him instead, which is going to get bloody for them. Okay, Taxi Driver has swung up for me. He is now making the cap of B, and the Honorees are coming off the Western map border. Strangers, again, still running that torpedo kiting action. Marius is doing what he can, but they have lost Yuzara. He's been burned down by the Stalingrads. So, actually, yes, he has. So, there's the question. Marios can't really bring the big guns of the Amateur to bear. He is on fire because, well, it's on their ease. They set everything on fire. It's what they do, especially when there are three of them. And Omni's second battleship might be about to bite the dust here. Mosquito goes down. Marios goes down. The battleships are toast, ladies and gentlemen. Sugami has been forced out. He, well, I don't know, He, we might be seeing a trade here. Witness! Witness! No, they're going for the close pass against each other. So he's passing up Woot. I expect because he's going to go for a point blank broadside on XCHD and then circle around to engage. Main battery is tracking, but he doesn't get the shot. XCHD had his 8 inch guns ready to go multiple armor piercing shells, point blank. And the Mosfer is down, but Woot and XCHD both took a pounding. And critically, they're right the way out on the 10 line. By the time they get back into the engagement, there may not be much left. See what you've done. Henri's have finally, of course, disposed of the amateurs. So they are now in a position to start closing on point B. And they may not bother, in fact, because point B has been captured Admittedly, Omni are still, by the numbers, going to win out in 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Strangers playing the torpedo kiting game, as he has done all game. However, the Honorees at this point have got to try to shove all the way up into C, really, and then force the two American heavies to decide between going bow onto them and broadsiding Graf's Kremlin. Excuse me. Or else trying to ride the lines between the two. Or they could kick south and try and bow on all of the SWYD vessels, but then those are on Rees. They're just going to load the high explosive and burn everything. The risk that the Henri's will run, however, is that they're sailing into the stomping grounds of not one, but two Summers-class destroyers. And that means 24 torpedo tubes pointed at them from two different angles. Hello, Crossfire, if Omni can coordinate. At this point, basically, SWID have got to shove into sea. It's how they handle the cruisers. Teacup Yuri pushing in and taking a coordinated pound. And Graf, say, taking rapid 8-inch fire in return. However, it's Yuri that's getting the worst at the moment. Kremlin fire comes in, but most of it smacks the mountain. Yuri's managed to defilade against all three Henri's. We have torpedoes coming in from Strangers once again, forcing Avenger Squirrel to turn port. But Avenger Squirrel gets into point C and the rot stops. Omni were 66 seconds away from the win. Now they have no points coming in. They're going to have to make some kills and rapidly in order for this to work. And everybody knows it. So the two... Honorees in the cap circle are now turning in. Points are locked, remember. They're not capping, but they are pulling it back. So can they engage properly? And now we have the torpedo crossfire coming in. Avenger in particular is sailing right into what can politely be described as a whole helping of soup. And of course, if he goes starboard, he ends up broadside to teacup Yuri. But Yuri is down. And Avenger's going to be joining him very shortly. One, two, three, four. Rapid cruiser trade, so points are pretty much where they were. Absolutely textbook torpedo crossfire there from the two Omni destroyers. Alpha, however, is now running a cap, and the third Omni 
of Matsu 337 enters the game once again. He has managed to take the long way around, get into control point C as well. We have torpedoes tracking in, but Alpha is live to this. He knows perfectly well how to run torpedo evasion. He is not going to be sailing in a straight line for anybody. However, he might find himself getting very personal with a couple of very angry 8-inch auto-loading cruisers. But XCHD takes a big hit there, probably from the Kremlin. More shells come in from the Honorary on the flank, and Matza has loaded the armor-piercing. He manages to get a shot in, and the Kremlin comes in. Grafsus say blast straight through the bow with the 18-inch guns and puts down the Omni Heavy Cruiser. At a stroke, Woots lost his backup and the Omni Firepower has been significantly dented on point C. And then Graf follows up again with another killer broadside, taking out the Salem as well. So it's suddenly the two Omnis have got the run of point C. They can play torpedo beat all they like. It's down to Conian and Strangers and we're suddenly seeing the guns coming into play on both Summers class destroyers. But with that much heavy metal against them, I don't know that they can turn the situation around. At this point, all see what you've done have to do is sit back and they can just hammer away. A no destroyer team winning a game, ladies and gentlemen. That is possibly going to go down as one of the upsets of the tournament. Wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. That is impressive to say the least. You're going to have to excuse me for a second. There we go. Right, so, oh, no, wait, no, Matt's takes a fire from Strangers. That might be enough. There we go. Strangers gets a kill. That buys a bit of time, but see what you've done. Us now 70 points up, 60 seconds away from a win, three cat points. I don't see how Omni can pull this back. They are going to lose this just ever so slightly and go one game down. We've seen Omni come back from 1-0 deficits, of course. They usually go on a rampage, but whew, who'd have thought a team with no destroyers could actually put up a serious fight and against one of the best-known competitive clans in the game to boot? Very, very well played from See What You've Done. I wonder how long it's going to be before we start seeing the copycat meta coming in. Although the game's completely over, of course, there's still 20 seconds to play, and Strangers is looking for that last little bit of blood. He's not going down without a fight. And there's always the chance of a detonation, isn't there? I mean, we've seen one today already, except no. Alpha did, in fact, load the Juliet Charlie signal, so that ain't happening. Nine seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and game to see what you've done. Woohoo, that is something of an upset. Okay, slight change up to see what you've done there. As expected, they have not gone full cruiser, but they've still only taken the one destroyer. And it's a Grozovoy. That, I think, is the first Grozovoy I have seen in this run of the tournament. They've taken the Republic and the Bourgogne for their battleships this time. Omni, I see a couple of changes to their lineup. Teacup Yuri has swapped out to a Des Moines, and they've still kept the pair of Summerses, though. So we'll see how this works. Once I'm done exploding, of course. Right, so... As noted before, this is very definitely a map where you do want at least one destroyer for point C. Interestingly, Omni are not going for point C. They've got Strangers pushing out for B and Kunian making a run west south west in order to get to point A. The rest of the ships are sorting themselves out. Now, there are a couple of key deployment areas, one of which is actually quite close to the northern side start point. It's this corner here. If you park a battleship or a supercruiser here, you have got a very good firing solution onto any attempt to run into point A from the south, and your left flank is shielded by the rather large lump of rock called an island. You do need a spotter, however, and that is where Canaan Summers is going to do its best work. 
He is, however, getting some close support as well. Teacup Yuri in the Des Moines. Bazinga Flux has swapped his Burgoyne out for the Moscow, and I wonder if we're going to see him push up into that firing point I mentioned earlier. In the Spes Moskva, I approve. It is, it is very cyberpunky. Um, what has a... I want to say... I want to say Cylon, but that's probably wrong. That's silver, black, and red color scheme. Well, mainly the original Cylons were mostly silver and didn't use that much black. But I get distracted. Strangers has taken a little bit of a detour. He's dropped torpedoes to suppress the approaches into B, but he's turned east to start with. Now, is he going to run south and along the BC gap? Or is he going to run the gap between these two islands here and then make his way into C? Hmm. His cruiser support is setting up on point C, both XTHD and Woot, the partnership we saw up on the northeastern corner in the last game, again moving to position here. And yeah, there we go. Strangers is taking the initial channel into C, and we'll see a southeast turn, well, southeast after what I suspect is a three-pointer. There we go. There's the starboard turn to put him onto the approach. You want to do the three-point turn as close to the cat border as you possibly can. So, hmm. Let's see how he times this, because there's the border. There's the ship. He's got about a, what, 600 meter turning circle. So we should see the hard break and port turn from him any moment now if he's playing the conventional game. No, in fact, he's going straight into point C. He may be gambling that if he needs to, he can make a hard left and exit to the northeast, and this map is kind of obliging in that regard, but we'll keep a close eye on, in fact, no, with just the Moskva here, and that not in radar range, he knows he's got about a thousand to 1500 meters to play with on Desert Fox, he can just take it slow, they've spotted the Grozovoy south of point B, he knows he's not likely to get detected, or suddenly torpedoed from nowhere, Strangers can make that cap in peace and dump a few anticipatory torpedoes to the southeast just to, you know, discourage anybody from wandering over and taking a look. There we go. Point C goes to Strangers and Omni start running in the points. Meanwhile, Teacup Yuri has gotten into point A, but so has Solitude. Remember that firing point I mentioned? Well, Bazinga isn't using it. He's gone a bit further south and has got an even better angle on Solitude's broadside. And Solitude is in the Minotaur. Oh boy, this is going to hurt. Okay, he's not dead yet. However, when he bolts round that corner to get away from the Moskva and the uh, Des Moines, okay, he didn't actually, he found the third option. He has jammed himself in south but he has nowhere to go at this point. And Teacup Yuri is going to be very tempted just to quietly peek around this corner, maybe. But don't forget, a Minotaur has 10 torpedo tubes either side. And Solitude, well, you can see which way his guns are pointed. The moment Teacup comes around that corner, he is going to eat multiple six-inch plus torpedoes, and he knows that he's not doing it. He's not stupid. However, Amini is the ship that is able to come around the corner and potentially force Solitude out of that little nook and or cranny. Of course, if that happens, Solitude's got nowhere to go. Because, well, if he goes east, he ends up in front of Bazinga. If he goes west, he ends up in front of Amni. And Amni is working his way west as well. And in fact, there should be line of sight. Oh, here we go. Incoming! Oh boy. Blam. Okay, Solitude gets away there, but that is enough to persuade him that he needs to start motoring. He takes a left turn and is still deflated, manages to keep the lock in play. So it's going to come down to whether or not Omni or possibly even Teacup are willing to come around that corner. But in order to do that, they have got to get rid of Avenger Squirrel. And we don't have the triple monster Honorary Div we did before. They've split themselves up a little and are playing a defensive game. 
probably just buying time for the so far undetected Burgoyne to get him to position and provide the heavy support they need to roll up A. Point B, however, we've not paid much attention to. Matza managed to grab the cap on the quiet, but Cornean is, well, he is thinking about it. We'll see him go into reverse just now. There we go. So he's backing up in the summers. I believe that is French camouflage he's wearing. Oh, well, at least he's acknowledging the role they played in the War of Independence. And there we go. Canean backing into point B now that he knows he's not likely to get detected. But remember, there is still a Grosvoy lurking to the southeast. So cap in progress. Matza is going to be looking to spot, but he wants to do it without getting seen by the very, very angry Russian battleship that is being captained by Yuzara. And there it is. Matza is spotted. He's locked the control point. He's got his weapons engaged on Kinean, but sudden torpedoes in the water. Strangers was also lurking her drop torpedoes to anticipate. Matza is spotted. He is cross-fired by the two Summers class destroyers and has to drop his smoke to evade detection bravery. But Kanean took a serious pounding and was in fact forced out of the circle again. So Matza manages to get pretty much everything he wanted with only a few thousand points of health traded away. Very nicely done there. Of course, next time that happens, it might not go so well because now they're are two Omni destroyers circling around and they have heavy fire support. And they now know that Matsu has got his smoke on cooldown because, well, they just saw it deployed. Question is, who wants to be the first one into the kill box? Meanwhile, Solitude still isn't dead. Rather impressively, A remains deadlocked. Nobody wants to move because the moment anybody does move, they get repeatedly shot. Uh, Sugumi's Burgoyne showed up, and that has definitely shunted the firepower in the favor of see what you've done. The thing is, of course, they can't really bring it to bear, because they'd have to have somebody get spotting on, oh, look, it's Omni, in order to take him out and thereby somehow locate and deal with Teacup Yuri, because anyone coming around that corner is going to get multiple rounds of 8-inch armor piercing to the face at point-blank range. So A remains deadlocked, B stays where the action is. Kinean, again, thinking about another tap into B. He's slowed it down, just crawling. He wants to stay mobile, but doesn't necessarily want to go straight back in. And in fact, I think he may have decided that it's not worth the effort. Point C, of course, thoroughly covered. The Des Moines and the Salem very effectively discouraging any attempt by see what you've done to get in there. So at the moment, it is one cap and no kills for everybody. It's just two blinks first. And like a lot of high-level games, when this happens and this match decides, it's going to happen extremely quickly. So Bazinga taking some long-range fire. He has got one fire burning. And as a consequence, he's having to pull himself back a little. That might be enough to persuade Solitude to risk making a break for it, but it won't work because Bazinga has pulled back enough that he's not under immediate fire, but he's still got line of fire to the gap southeast of the island in A. So ooh, Solitude still can't break away east and disengage there, but he's having a little nudge. Just having a quick look to see if maybe no. And again, Omni's not in a hurry to move either. Teacup Yuri is swapping the occasional bit of long range fire with Sugumi's Burgoyne. And if memory serves, the Burgoyne is using 15 inch guns, which is why he hasn't just overmatched and blammed Teacup Yuri. He can't. The Des Moines has a 27 millimeter bow. And as a result, they'll need to get around the flank to use that. That's one of the few disadvantages of the French battleships. Main battery guns are, except for the Republique, relatively small caliber. Bazinga still locking down the west-southwest approach. And point B remains deadlocked so far. Nobody is making any serious mistakes. And the moment I say that, Matsu gets caught in point B again. Right, so he goes for smoke, but Bazinga has popped it, the radar on the Moskva, so this time it isn't going to work. Desert Fox opens fire, but he's out of radar range. Strangers is now in smoke. 
We have coordinated gunfire coming in on Matza, and he has a fire and a busted engine. He has last stand, of course, but I don't know that he's going to be able to get around that corner. Uh, no, maybe he will. Yeah, he should be able to scuttle around the back of point B. But in doing so, he opens the way up for strangers to just wriggle in and start getting the cap going. He's just inside the cap, and that is enough to start swinging it around. Matza gets forced off his blocking position. And at this point, the next question is, is the Stalingrad of Graf Zussi close enough to get radar onto Stranger, and I think he is by a matter of about 200 meters. Of course, in order to do that, he then has to land a hit on Strangers, and well, that might take a few seconds, and it didn't happen in time. Strangers gets the cap. Two points to nil to Omni, and suddenly the terrain advantage has swung. If that puts the pressure on Sewage on, they have got to get that control point back in the next couple of minutes, or it will be too late. So, point C still remains. XCHD and Woot, I think, are either having the best games of their careers in that their mission is being completely successful, or they're having the most boring game of their careers because they haven't got anything to shoot. XCHD in particular in the Salem is, well... Has anyone got a pack of cards? But it's a necessary duty because they've kept point C locked down along with the Yamato of Mario, so that has been what has given them a good chunk of the points advantage, and the fact that they've not had any shooty-shooty, well, small price to pay, really, but they're getting some shooty-shooty now. Marios gets a broadside into Desert Fox and shaves about 15,000 health off him as Fox tries to push up. The Republic is starting to move as well, and we're seeing a determined push coming through A. Now, remember that Yuri and Sugami have been swapping rounds. Yuri finally gets whittled down. That will free the way for Solitude to break away and start getting back into this game. But in the process, Squirrel has run across, and they have to be careful not to completely overextend here, because the moment they do. They are going to run right into Yuzura's Kremlin over on point B. Point A will go to them. They will not get that block done in time. Matsu is looking for a way round, but I don't think he's found it. And Desert Fox and Woot are starting to engage as well. Desert Fox is in a solid position. He is covered against the Omni forces to the north and west by virtue of the island. He can focus fire onto Woot as best he can, but he has another problem just coming around the corner. Ohio Yamato! Yeah, Mosfa's bow armor is not going to stop 46 centimeter shells. Youch! Not to worry, he is still sailing half a boat. For the moment. Half a boat which is now thoroughly on fire and has torpedoes coming its way. And is getting riddled by 8 inch auto loaded high explosive from a Des Moines. Oh, and uh, Marios has just reloaded the uh, Misaka class guns aboard that thing, and yep, no, the bow armor didn't stop those very much either. But his sacrifice is buying time. Graf say has gotten into point B, and he may be able to get a shot onto Yuzura, who's playing a very careful position game here, trying to get his forward guns engaged without showing Citadel to the Stalingrad's main battery. It's worked, kinda. Also, it meant he could dodge those torpedoes as well. So, Mosfa ramming Trey, Bazinga Flux and Taxi Driver taking each other out north west of Point B. Point B falls to see what you've done. They are 220 points behind, but the score timers are within 20 seconds of each other. Desert Fox may regret trading all that health away. Marios fires again. It's only going to need one. And yep, Marios gets the kill. So he is down, however, to one third health. And that is a fire on the Amato. The Amato is now down to 20% health, rapidly coming down and getting hit. Of course, he has got that 32mm barrel, so the Republic is going to struggle. But the Republic knows he doesn't have to get serious pens. He just has to start landing enough hits. Repair party comes in from Marios. 
Grav Suche takes some 46 centimeter rifle hits and is forced to back up. Woot is focusing fire and indeed calling the focus on Grav Suche to try and bring him down rapidly. Omni now 300 points ahead, three minutes away from the win. But if the forces that see what you've done have got in point A, can get across to B and up, oh, sudden Grozovoy from nowhere. Matza 337 barreling in. Or then again, possibly thinking better of it. You'll know he's been detected briefly there by Yuzra. Nope, he is committing. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kremlin's guns are tracking around. Yuzra knows perfectly well that he will get one broadside. And, oh, Matza there using a bit of terrain-assisted deceleration there because he did not want to run out in front of the Des Moines. And he must be cursing his luck that he got detected just then and had to abort what would have been a kill run on the Kremlin. If Yuzra had gone down, that would have removed a large chunk of Omni's supporting firepower, especially since the Yamato of... Marios has been burned down as well. Strangers taking hits in the smoke. XCHD finally getting his turn at the shooty and absorbing some early firepower. But really, at this point, it's all on Yuzura. If see what you've done can get rid of him in the next couple of minutes without taking too much in the way of damage, they will be able to start rolling this map up. Interestingly, the forces over at A, right, Sukabi. Lost too much health. He's playing defensive and disengaging. Avenger is playing the details. Sugumi, however, wow. <laughs> Shot from across the map puts down the Kremlin of Yuzura. That removes the linchpin that was holding point B for Omni, or at least stopping the rot. So 8.30 to 8.22, it is going to go to see what you've done unless Omni can pull a kill back here. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. Omni's own tactics getting used against them. Strangers and XCHD being forced to drop back now that they're missing most of their spotting. Woot is still in the game, but I think he is dropping back slightly as well to try to find the position. Yep, there he is. He is in reverse. And suddenly it is Solitude's turn. He's been picked up by the Minotaur of Conan. He's diving for cover. Remember, it's going to come down basically to a one kill situation here. See, what you've done are a mere 20 points ahead at this stage. There is 70 seconds left in the game. Omni have to kill. They cannot rely on the control points turning this back for them. But everyone knows perfectly well it's only going to be a one-kill decider at this point. First team to lose a ship in the next 54 seconds is going to lose this round. Alpha 003 taking some fire, but he is about, but XCHD is broadside. Omni shells go in, but the terrain stops them. The velocity was a bit too high on the French guns. They were a bit too flat and it did not work. Woot pops his last radar looking to get shots on Matza. Remember the Des Moines high explosive rounds auto load. Matza is backing up hard. He will just make the corner of the island and duck away with 2,000 health. However, Woot is exposed in his turn. 6,000, zero! And see what you've done. Go 130 points up with 13 seconds on the clock. Can Omni clutch this? I don't think they can. Their best hope will be to get rid of the Minotaur of Solitude, but he is not stupid. He is not going to be pulling away. Ladies and gentlemen, Omni lose 2-0. Wow. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. Battle time expired. SWID win on points and take the round 2-0. Congratulations to them.